I wanted to go over something I uncovered yesterday working with these plasma ignition uh, well I don't know if they're really plasma ignition but they they do produce a lot of plasma uh, these spark gaps um, what I did was hooked up to uh, the the output of the microwave oven transformer to two separate spark plugs so one um, I have going in one direction the AC current and the other is dealing with the opposite direction of the AC current and the idea is that on both sides of the AC just like with a full bridge rectifier we're gonna get some output what this also does is it accounts for any kind of back EMF. So any back EMF that's occurring has some place to go and it doesn't uh, end up becoming an inductive loss inside the transformer. And what I found was that the transformer actually stays a little cooler even though it's drawing a lot more power. On top of that, the sparks are a lot more, um, well, you'll get to see. So I'm gonna turn this on, dimmer switch. So that's a lot more eventful than, <laughs> than even with the, the water spark plugs I had yesterday. Now what's interesting to note is that this spark plug is closer, uh, or at least the gap is closer than on this spark plug. What that means is that you have two different frequencies because the closer the gap is on the spark plug, the higher the frequency it'll go at. Um, but the, the longer this, the gap is, like on this one, The higher, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the longer the gap is, the lower the frequency, um, but the higher the voltage required to, to pass that gap. So you effectively have two different frequencies. Now, if you take the output from those, so using, if you go in parallel with each of these and add those together, I'm guessing you'll get a frequency uh, uh, addition. So then, why is that important? Well, with uh, Stanley Myers' uh, water system, he had what he called a, a, a pulse train frequency. And what that looked like is this. So you get the stepping, the stepping frequency And that repeated climbing pulse would release the water molecules. So if you have two frequencies, you can have something that looks like this, something that's more typical of a capacitor or, a, or an inductor, and then have something like this, it's just all over the place. and add those together. So if you do a little bit of frequency addition, you can get what Stanley Meyer uh, had used or uh, uh, had uh, talked about. Uh, additionally, with Ed Gray's motor, there's a, a guy named Mark McKay that said that his motor actually used dual power supplies and maybe for the same reason, or uh, to have this kind of a push-pull effect, which is kind of what we're getting here. Yeah, this wasn't even, this didn't even warm up that much. Uh, and what that push-pull effect does is that it keeps the energy from going back, you know, any, any lost energy. Um, so you, you don't lose as much energy to heat. Let's see if we can get that going again before I close up.
And I, I try to take measurements on it, but I, <laughs> I blew out um, my little uh, oscilloscope, oscilloscope probe. So that got fried. Blew out, uh, I think, one of my, uh, my clamp multimeters. So it's kind of hard to get a measurement on it, but uh, I just ordered some bridge rectifiers and I'm gonna see if I'm getting more than, uh, you know, or it will just measure how much energy I'm getting out of those uh, spark gaps. And then next I can start working on uh, the Nikola Tesla hairpin circuit and see how that works with this type of, uh, this type of spark. All right, that's it for now. Uh, one more shot of the, the circuit diagram. I didn't actually include the, the exact dimmer switch, but uh, I mean, it's, it would basically be replacing the switch on the AC with a um, with a potentiometer. It's just the dimmer switch can handle it, that kind of power, that AC power a lot better from what I found. All right. That's about it. Thank you.